What does it take to be the very best? Do you need to be a man made out of ice? A silent vigilante, cloaked in the shadows, vengeance being your number one goal. What about an immortal, shunned from society, looking to regain former glory? Out of the swamps you rise. Out of the depths you crawl, others following, but never achieving. Can you live up to your full potential? Will you ever be good enough to be named champion? What if those same people who once supported you claim your glory is false? Can you be like the legends of old? Can you strive to steal the show? When brothers unite, there is nothing stronger. But what if the shield cracks? What if the queen is usurped from her throne? Or a bad guy is just too sweet? It's time we answered those questions on Burnouting's Top 15 WWE Action Figures of 2015. Hey guys, this is Chase, that guy with the gloves. Not gonna lie, I'm actually really upset right now. This is, this was just going to be a top 10, this was just going to be a top 10 video. I wasn't going to do what everyone else has been kind of doing with the top 15 thing because, you know, it was 20, it was 2015, so 15 figures for them or whatever. I wanted to keep this to a top 10, but I just couldn't. There's too many good figures that came out in the last year. I, I just could not keep it down to 10. I tried so freaking hard. Over half of these guys, I, I it was so close to, I didn't want to put them in there. I did not want to have them on here. I wanted Shawn Michaels in the top 15, I wanted the Bulldog, Dean Malenko, I wanted Mizdow in there, I wanted the RC uh, Ringside Collectibles exclusive uh, Scott Hall, uh, the Godfather Doink. Oh my god, this was such, I had such a hard time not like nailing down just 15, so seriously, this is the top 15 WWE action figures of 2015. Right now, this is an honorable mentions list. So starting off, we have the Ringside Collectibles exclusive Shawn Michaels. Really, really big fan of this figure. The head scan looks cool. Love the glasses. I love this vest. The paint apps on it were just, they're so good. Oh, I'm so sad I have to, I have to take this off of the list. I really, really like how that turned out. Any other year, this could have been a figure of the year candidate. Got the Elite 34, Doink the Clown, just barely, barely made it. I mean, I mean, he just barely missed out on the top 15. The paint apps, the extra hair, the, the bucket, it's just really, really good. Behind him, you have the Bella Twins. They weren't going to make the top 15, um, but they were really good Divas figures. Even with the limited articulation on the basics. Over here, AJ. God, this basic series AJ, I wanted it on the top 15 list. I, I think she's probably number 16 in terms of best of the year. Really great. This is the best AJ figure that they've ever made. Looks just like her. The paint apps are great. Bulldog! No! The Elite 39 British Bulldog. Ah, oh, damn it. Barely. Barely. Ah, oh, it was right there. Uh, the Elite 37 Dean Malenko. I couldn't ask for a better figure. I think maybe if um, the paint apps on his hair and his eyebrows were actually black, I mean they're more of a, a dark brown and I, I'm, unless I'm colorblind, he's got black hair. Got the Elite 34 page back there, another great figure. 
You got the J&J Security 2 pack. I really love them, um, you know, despite the basicness of their figures, because they're basic figures. Their articulation's pretty limited, but I just love posing around with, posing them. They're, they're really cool. The Hall of Fame series Yokozuna. This is a great figure. It's got some balancing issues because of the feet sculpting, but those tag titles, oh my god, they're things of beauty, man. And then here we got the Hall of Fame series Eddie Guerrero. Oh man, just, I cannot believe I have to keep this off of the list. I love it. The Elite 38 Roman Reigns. It's a badass figure. Great paint apps on it. Um, except for on the face. It was a little sloppy. I think they did this goatee in just a little bit too much. But the vests are cool because he comes with two of them. And I love what they did with his hand where they had the R, they had the Roman Reigns symbol on it. Uh, the Four Horsemen 4-pack four Ric Flair. Great figure. That head, that head sculpt. Perfect. The Elite 35 Triple H. The figure itself is okay, but it was his entrance gear that really sets this one off, sets this one apart. Now you guys are probably wondering why is Hall of Fame Series 1 and Elite 33 on this list? Well, I did not see these figures retail-wise until early 2015. Amazon didn't have them until early 2015 either, so they're included on the list. They get a, just because Ringside got them like a month before 2014 ended. I found them in 2015, so they get counted here. So the Elite 33 Blue Tista, love the figure. The paint apps are amazing. Uh, the Hall of Fame series Sergeant Slaughter, I couldn't ask for a better Sergeant Slaughter figure. It's perfect, but, and I can't believe I'm saying that, a perfect figure is not in my top 15 list. How How is that possible? You're gonna find out, you're gonna find out why. Back there we have the Elite 37 and Elite 39 Miz and Miz Dow. Well, the Hollywood actor and his stunt double couldn't make the list. What the hell else could? Got the Elite 34 Hulk Hogan back there. It's a pretty good figure, just, you know, it's a little on the bottom rung. The Elite 39 Godfather could have had a little more detail on the vest. Other than that, yeah, I can't say anything bad about it. The Elite 36 Goldust, again, for what it is, it's a perfect figure. Love the paint apps, love the new head scan on it. It looks you know, like Evil Gold Dust, how it should. The Hall of Fame series Ultimate Warrior. <sighs> Again, another perfect figure, it's just not on the list. Back there we have the Elite 38 APA. I've got some complaints about them, but overall, I really love the figures. They, they just have a lot of character to them. I will concede, even though I do like the molded on shirts, I really would have preferred cloth shirts, that way they could have been removable. They probably would have been sleeveless all across the board instead of, ha instead of having to deal with sleeveless variants and all that other all that other junk, you know what I mean? But again, with it being on plastic, I'm more worried about the APA logo scratching off on the back and stuff like that. But and Farouk, his head scan is a little off, and his flesh tone it's a, it's a little too dark. They should have lightened him up a little bit. But he's a great figure, and so is Bradshaw. And seriously, they would have made they would have made they almost made the top 15 based on their accessories alone. The APA chairs with the, the poker table and the door. This freaking door is so awesome. And back there, we have what ended up on a lot of people's top 10 lists. We've got the Ringside Collectibles exclusive, Scott Hall. I wasn't really looking forward to this figure that much until I got my hands on it. And I gotta say, it just jumped up there for me. It's just got a lot of personality and I love, I love the way the paint apps look. The spray can's really cool too. And back there we have the Elite 37 Seth Rollins. The vest is pretty damn cool. And I do love the attire on him. The attire is just freaking sweet. It's a badass figure. Sorry, Farouk. Okay, I know you guys are wondering. If these guys aren't in the top 15, who the hell is? The Elite 37, Stephanie McMahon. By far, this was the best Divas figure of the year. Spot on face sculpt. Paint apps are really, really good. I love the way the hair looks. The molding that went into her attire is absolutely perfect. The detail in her SummerSlam 2014 attire is just brought out perfectly with all the lace parts, all the bejeweled pieces, the paint work, the paint apps. It's all great. 
Like I said, best Divas figure of the year. Would have been ranked higher if it wasn't for the limited articulation on these Divas figures. It's always disappointed me. Really hope Mattel will step up their game someday. That and the signs that she came with. Uh, they're pretty cool too. The Toys R Us exclusive, Seth cashes in, Seth Rollins Elite. I love the face sculpt, the paint apps that were applied to it are really, really well done. Absolutely love it. The new WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt that Seth comes with, it's got some controversy around it. People don't seem to like the painted on apps to it. They prefer the molded plastic plates, which I really do love. But I do have to say, I like the way this title is designed. I think it looks really cool. He also includes the Money in the Bank briefcase, a little oversized, whatever. The paint apps on his attire, great. I really love the way the gold looks on the black. His belt buckle turned out perfectly. The knee pads look cool. Everything on here is pretty spot on accurate. The legs could have been a little bit longer, and I wish he would have had the more bulkier uh, boots with the kick pads that he's wearing nowadays, whereas these are just kind of your standard Mattel kick pads. But overall, it's an absolutely great figure. It's one of the highlights of the year. And now we're getting psychotic. The Elite 39 Psycho Sid. Sid was a staple of 90s wrestling, and seriously, the Elite 39 Psycho Sid should be a staple in your wrestling collection. The face sculpt, spot on, looks absolutely menacing and psychotic just the way you would want it to. I think um, all the detail in his hair looks really, really cool with all the little curls and stuff like that. Could probably be a shade lighter in the blonde area, but I still really like it. The vest though, this thing is really, really cool with all the little like ropes and stuff in it. The buttons look really nice. Yeah, just spot on accurate to, how, to the uh, vest that Psycho Sid used to wear back in the 90s. And I just really like the way this figure looks. Like how tall he is, how freaking muscular and toned uh, the figure is. Just really great. This figure is psychotically good. The Elite Series 33 Roman Reigns. I love this thing so much. I cannot really describe how much how much it just captures Roman's personality. The face sculpting just looks cool the way he's just snarling. I love how minimal they painted his uh, his goatee. It just looks really, really good. It looks a lot better than the Elite 38. It's my favorite Roman Reigns head scan to, to date as well. The vest is really, really cool. My only complaint about it is that the little snaps on the side don't stay on very well. When I pose them around, they pop off. But the detail in the vest is really cool. I love the, the buckles and stuff like that in there. The shield logo looks cool. The texturing, really great. His gauntlets, I think these things turned out really badass. And the articulation on him is really, really well done. The tattoo, god this thing looks freaking sweet. If you don't own this figure, definitely pick him up. I think it's better than the Elite 38. In fact, what I'm gonna do is actually take the best parts from the Elite 38, the vest, the different hands, swap them out so I can make my ultimate version of Roman Reigns. Believe that. The Elite Series 36, Stardust. What can I say? I'm a huge Stardust mark. I absolutely love the gimmick, and I think this figure is freaking badass. Damn near spot on. I really love the way the face sculpt turned out. The paint apps on it look really cool. The eyes are all red and yellow. Love, <laughs> I just love this attire. This is from his night, this is from uh, Night of Champions 2014. Uh, the silver, blue, and gold just really, really pop. I think it's a great color combination. Um, I also love, too, that Mattel was able to actually paint on the star on Stardust's gloves. And, like, the little Batman fins, too, on the end. Those just look really cool. On the back, it says Stardust. Just, it looks awesome. Freaking love these boots, man. All the little stars they got painted on there. Yeah. Can't say enough. 
good things about the cosmic villain. <laughs> The Elite Series 36 Bray Wyatt. How could they top the Elite 28? We really can't, that figure's damn near perfect, but they got really close with this one. I love the new hat, the black with the red markings, and I'm guessing that's like a mushroom cloud right there, it just looks really, really badass. I love what they did with the lantern, they actually made the plastic in there much more translucent and clear. I'll have to do that uh, trick where I put the LED light underneath it. This uh, butcher's apron, totally sick, looks awesome, super easy to take off too. All of the detail is there. I love the little buzzard symbol on his pocket, the tattoos, just as sick as ever. But his green pants look really great, and he's got like this ribcage sort of knee pad looking design, or knee brace thing here. Totally awesome, and I love these snakeskin boots. Once again, Bray Wyatt has one of the most badass figures of the year. I can't wait to see what he gets in 2016. The Target Exclusive Hall of Fame Series Wave 1 Stone Cold Steve Austin. I actually really, really dig this head scan. You can totally make out Steve Austin's features. The goatee looks pretty good. The eyes look good. The gold chain is pretty sweet. The vest, totally awesome. It's what Austin wore at WrestleMania 19 when he took on The Rock. Little paint defects here and there on it, but overall it's really badass. I love how they did the shorts, the sculpted on uh, jean shorts that Steve Austin used to wear. It's really interesting how they did this compared to some of the other figures, because he's actually got a swivel cut off here instead of at his upper hip. The knee braces, they still work. The tattoo looks great. And I just love the presence of this figure. I get just so much nostalgic joy looking at it. Pure Attitude Era, absolutely love it. And that's the bottom line. With a pair of gators chomping at his feet, it's the Elite 35 Luke Harper. Luke Harper had one of the better figures of 2014. How did they improve that? They gave us a brand new head sculpt that looks just 100% accurate to Luke Harper. I mean, I seriously feel like I'm looking at him right now. The beard looks great. I love the way they pulled his hair back and they made it all slick like. This gray vest with the white symbol on there and the, he's got the whole world in his hands. Just looks, it just looks so freaking cool. And I love the way they did the bandanas tied around his uh, around his wrist with the black underneath. Just looks really great. And these two cute little added gators. They're actually really detailed. You can see all their little teeth and stuff like that. And just look at those eyes. They're totally freaking creepy. Run. The defining moments Undertaker. If you guys missed out on the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Undertaker, well, this is a good way of making up for that. Absolutely perfect, well damn near, and I love it. I seriously, again, I love that Comic-Con Undertaker, but for some reason this one, it just has a little more of a menacing presence. I'm loving it more and more, just having it on my shelf and looking at it. Head scan, head sculpt. Just 100% accurate to how Taker looked back then. The paint apps are all really, really good. The molding on this thing was already just freaking perfect and still translates very well. So again, if you miss out on that SDC, SDCC 2010 Undertaker, don't be a dummy. Pick this one up. The Elite 36 Dean Ambrose, the lunatic has escaped the asylum. I really, really dig the way this face sculpt turned out. It's a little goofy when you look at it, but honestly, this is probably the best Dean Ambrose face that we've seen so far from Mattel. His vest turned out really great. It's a softer material, easier to take off. I love just the way it looks, the colors. He's got the Dean Ambrose initial symbol back there, it's just kind of a play on the anarchy symbol. The way the, uh, the hood is sculpted on here, it's really, really nice. Sorry about all the autofocusing. But yeah, the way that hood is sculpted looks really cool. The jeans and the belt 
turned out really great. And he comes with a kendo stick for beating up on certain people that are friendly with the authority. The Elite Series 40, Umaga. This face sculpt is just freaking perfect. The paint apps on it look amazing. His grill looks awesome. These like dreadlocks, they turned out really well. His Samoan necklace is cool. Came with the Usos. Uh, this uh, newly sculpted thumb for the Samoa spike looks awesome. Just gonna jam that up somebody's, but well, we're not gonna go there. Um, all these tattoos, I, I'm actually really surprised they turned out as great as they did. I mean, they're just perfect everywhere. The detail on this figure, I just can't put in the words. It's so awesome. Only thing I don't like about it, and it's, a, it's kind of a big gripe, is that there's a big skin tone issue going between the arms into the upper body, but I'm used to that from Mattel. It just is really jarring on this figure. His entrance are wrong, pretty cool. Comes off fairly easily. His attire, it's got the red Umaga face there, and it says Umaga on the left side of his tights. Those look pretty cool. All of his tattoos turned out really great. Another big gripe is because he has the bare feet, he doesn't stand up too well on his own. In fact, he slips and falls over. I almost kind of wish Mattel would just make these um, these characters that have the feet, like Yokozuna and Rusev, just make them completely flat. I know it's not accurate, but they're easier to stand that way. The Elite Series 40, Sami Zayn. Sami's Elite figure has been a long time coming and Mattel did not disappoint. Heard some complaints that he was missing elbow pads, but from what I keep hearing, this attire that he wore didn't have the elbow pads, so I'm not gonna dock it or anything like that. I really love the face sculpt. The paint apps on it were applied perfectly well. I know he complained about the chest here, but I think it looks pretty cool. The paint on the attire came out really clean. I love the attire that they chose for him. The white and the red just really pop on the black. It looks great, the boots look cool. And Sammy came with my absolute favorite title in WWE right now, the NXT Championship. This thing is freaking sweet. All the molding is there. I love what they were able to do with the strap. This is just one badass looking title. If I was in NXT, I would certainly be competing for it. Ole. The Elite Series 35 Earthquake. I was really looking forward to this figure when it was announced, and for some reason, ever since I've got it, I cannot stop playing around with it. I think the face sculpt looks just like Earthquake. The beard and the hair look great. Um, his attire, this blue with the black kind of uh, sharp edges cutting through it, and then you got the yellow seismograph going through. It just looks perfect. It's so awesome to look at. Now, Earthquake didn't have a whole lot of accessories. What would have been cool if he would have included like a megaphone, like an alternate megaphone for Jimmy Hart, but he does have Damien, Jake the Snake's pet snake that he uh, was afraid of. So on an episode of, I think it was Superstars, Earthquake decided to squash old Damien here. So it's kind of cool. You get two rivals in one elite package. For some reason, I just get a lot of good nostalgic feelings when looking at this figure. And that's what I think an action figure should do, especially with these uh, flashback characters. So, yep, another thing I point out, the tattoo looks super sick and awesome. And hey, it's another figure with chest hair. I can relate to that. Mattel, you did a wonderful job on this earthquake. Now, give us the Shockmaster. I don't want Typhoon, I want the Shockmaster. The WWE Defining Moments Sting. This guy almost made it to the number one spot. 
for all intents and purposes, it's damn near perfect. There was just a few things that held it back. But that's the thing of this figure, man. I mean, even for its flaws, it's the things that it gets right just propel it almost all the way to the top. I absolutely love the face sculpt on here. Yes, the hair could have been a little bit longer and maybe a little bit darker, but that that looks just like Sting in my opinion. Um, I love the necklace. This um, attire that he wore at Starcade 97 looks absolutely great. I think it translated very well to action figure form. The scorpion looks badass. These shoulder pads are cool. They should have been made of a flexible material though. All the molding on his pants, these look real. It just looks really cool. It's not something I usually see on an elite figure. It's either skin tight to where it almost looks like just, you know, like guys wearing tights or something like that. But to me, it just looks like he's wearing tight leather pants and then he's got all the padding and stuff in there. Nice texture work on it. The boots look freaking awesome. The bat's cool. It should be made of an entire flat material. It does have some like uh, wood texturing in there. And come on, Sting had aluminum bats. But the one thing Mattel had to nail when it came to this figure was his coat. And they knocked it out of the freaking park. A little baseball pun there, given the baseball bat, but whatever. This fabric coat is just amazing. It's like lightweight, it's not overly thick. Sting can do all of his trademark poses in it. And that's the thing I love about Defining Moments is we just get this fabric material and it's really great. I got pretty much no complaints about the coat. It could have used like maybe a split in there, but again, I'm not complaining. It's just that great. The Sting was almost the franchise of 2015. Can you believe it, Bison? We're already in 2016, and there have been so many great action figures. Yes! Mattel and WWE give us their very best for 2015. And I can't wait to see what we get in 2016. Hey, guys! This is Chase, that guy with the gloves. And we're getting set to unveil the very best WWE action figure of 2015. Elite's Hall of Fame defining moments will pale in comparison to this figure. He or she will win the Burnout Inc. Platinum Bison Trophy of Excellence. Is that really what we're calling it? Yes. Okay, whatever. So, the runner-ups are all on the outside of the ring. I'm pretty certain they're all just as excited as we are to see what the very best WWE Mattel figure was for 2015. I mean, seriously, these guys are the best of the best. So, if they couldn't win, I mean, who the hell could? Well, Chase, why don't you just rub some more salt in their wounds? Why don't you just tell them their mothers didn't love them and that they were horrible children? What? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that they weren't as good as the best figure. I mean, they're still really awesome. Wait a minute. Yeah, oh, this is it, guys. Okay. Is everybody ready? Yes, we're ready. God damn it. Okay. Here it is. The very best WWE action figure of 2015. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! Wait a minute. Yay! Vince McMahon! Come here, buddy. Give me a hug. Congratulations. This is... What? This is bullshit. Uh, seriously? This again? Yes, Vince McMahon, the guy who created all of this, deserves this trophy. I chase you'll keep your damn mouth shut. There you go, Vinny. Come get your trophy, big guy. Oh, God, this is ridiculous. Of all the asinine things I've ever seen... Wait a minute. What the hell? What the hell is he doing here? Well, Bison, I think the bad guy's got something to say about this. What's wrong? Oh, you're here. And, hey, hey, that's my camera. Do you know how much those things cost? Bison, I doubt Razor Ramon gives a damn. Seriously, he gets Pyro too. What is this? Austin made me. Boy, Damn You steal from Razor Ramon. 
Do you know what a guy like me can do to a guy like you? All right, leave him alone. Go to commercial. Razor's got him up and Razor's edge to the chairman of WWE. That was freaking awesome. Are you kidding me? They just attacked a senior citizen. How appropriate is it that one of the very first figures I reviewed in 2015 became the WWE figure of the year? Ain't that ironic? I wonder if there's some foul play in here from the bad guy. No, not really. This figure is just that damn good. This is the defining moments Razor Ramon. Spot on face sculpt. I love the five o'clock shadow and all the details in um, Razor's slick back hair. His chains with the little razor blade in there look great. The chest hair, come on, that chest hair oozes of machismo, man. He comes with the Intercontinental Championship belt. I love the white version, but damn, this thing is just so classy looking. I'd say it actually kind of over overrides it and I just love how huge and bulky it is compared to the other one. The vest, the front of it, amazing. You got the gold buttons over here. You even got the little slits in there for the buttons. I mean, just the detail that went into this thing. The back of it, it's got a slick looking Razor Ramon logo. He's got his razor blades on his elbow pads, on the back of his trunks, on the front of his knee pads. It says Razor on the front. You got these pretty sweet looking purple boots. I can't say enough good things about the bad guy here. Say what you want. If you disagree with me, that's totally cool, but I wouldn't want to get on his bad side, Chico. So let's give it up for the bad guy, Razor Ramon, WWE's best figure of 2015. Look at me now. Nobody beats the bad guy. And congratulations to Razor Ramon. All the other superstars are in the ring and up. Oh. Seriously, can I get some help from Vince McMahon? I just see so much of myself in him. He's an evil, maniacal billionaire. I can relate to that. I just want him to win one year. Not your sure, Bison. There's always next year. Did you touch me? Well, folks, that's going to wrap up our best of 2015. I'm Chase from Brent Anique, that guy with the gloves. And I'm M. Bison. And we'll see you next time. And remember, drive safe. Wait, did you steal that from Wadfit?